First thing we're going to do is use base coat sealer to seal the fish. Uh, keeps the fungus off. I uh, use the paint good thing to adhere to. I go over everything, even my repair work. Uh, just put a good coat all over the whole fish. And where are you going to put paint? Go ahead and put it on. Uh, about two good coats. Put it on there real good. The belly. The back of the fish. Just do the whole fish and I'll show you what we do next. Now what I like to do, uh, well like you see with my stripe and my other fish, I'll actually go over the markings with like a Sharpie pen because it bleeds through the other paints. But there's nothing saying you can't go ahead and use your airbrush and maybe use black and then just put them in. Uh, the main thing is uh, you can see them after you put your white on. White is very opaque though so I tend to use a Sharpie pen and I just put the marks in exactly like I see them. Um, there's a pattern I tend to go by, as you've noticed on my uh, stripe video, my yellow bass video. There's pretty much a pattern, but you can also just put them exact, the marks, just like you see them, you can't go wrong. But just do that and pretty much exactly like you see it. And the Sharpie pen will bleed through your other colors. And you'll have an awesome looking fish because you're using the real details. You never, anytime you can trace over mother nature and use it, you have a lot better looking fish. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. But I'm going to go ahead and get all this done. And I'll show you my progression a little bit. It won't take long, just a few minutes. <coughs> well, here's what I got so far on my stripe. Uh, my hybrid stripe. Uh, see how they're broken up down here at the bottom? I'm just uh, just filling in what I see. Uh, getting it pretty well as exact as I can. You know, the major blemishes. And I definitely see what looks like a line through here. And then I'm going to go back and do all my blemishes, of course. And, but yeah, it's definitely a line. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that in. And, and you can tell it's kind of broken up up here. Uh, it's a little bit different than a stripe. Stripe has some broken up right around the top of the head. But down here, these are, it's, it's broken up. That's how you can tell a hybrid. <clears throat> but I'll show you what we do next. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Okay, here's what I got on the spot so far. If you notice at the top, I see the lines. So I know I've got to do a little scale detail work. You know, I follow the technique um, where I, I use the back of the scale and then maybe a little bit of the front of the next proceeding scale um, like that. But on these hybrids, I pretty much replicate what I see. This one has a good spot pattern. But like down here, I see this. And I see colors like that. And so I replicate them exact. Because you want the staggered spotting. And so that's what I'm incorporating in. But if I see the lines, I go ahead and just make a mark through the lines. Because... You know, I can see it. And I'm going to end up putting it on the fish anyway. Then I just go back and put my spottings in. And basically, everything that I see is what I'm putting in. You can 
you can see I've done it across the lateral line and did it through here even. So I'm just incorporating what I see. But I'll get this done and show you what I've got. Now, if I have to, if I feel it's more natural, I may go ahead and thicken this spot up just a hair. Not much. This is a lateral line. But I know I'm going to end up doing it later because it's a lateral line. But, but at any rate, I'm going to show you what we do next. So I'm, basically what I do is I use the back of the preceding scale and it may be a little bit where the two scales for the next scale meet. You get a scale, then you get two scales that come out to make the other, the, to make the row above and below like you've got there. Well, I'll go in here, make a row, and then I'll put like two dots or maybe a little bit more than two dots. But on this fish, you know that the details are so small, they're not really conforming. But if you look at my rockfish uh, video, or my yellow bass, or even my stripe, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'll show you what we do next. Spots are looking pretty good. Um, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, now I've got all flat. And usually I just hold it by the stick. I don't do the screws, hold it by the stick and just paint it white and have total control. But since I'm doing a video, I'm just going to go ahead and do it here. I just go ahead and whiten the whole fish. And the Sharpie pin will bleed through enough. I make sure I get the gills real good. Basically the whole fish. Now a lot of people just put their white on light enough where they can still see their spotting. And you can do that. There's nothing that says you have to use a Sharpie pin. I just... I just don't want to be limited on how much paint I think I need to put on uh, just so I can see the bottom colors. But go ahead and do that and I'll show you what we do next. Wipe the whole fish, inside, the gills, everything. Okay, here's a fish completely whited out. I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now I've got diver gray. And, uh, of course, I like to use this, because uh, a lot of the fans, I mean, although they have a Payne's gray look, sometimes I think I see a little bit of a gray look, you know, maybe underneath a little. You know, Payne's gray is out, like, awfully blue, although the dollar gray is much different than white. I just, I opt for it, it's just a habit I've got, and I come out with a good fish anyway. And maybe I do drown this color out completely. I don't know, but uh, I like the gray and then a little bit of blue on it. And if I have to, go back over it with gray to gray it up a little. And I do do that. And I'll probably even go a little bit on the back. And I uh, try to control overspray on my body. Now, I also use silver metallic, which is very gray also. So it's, uh, it's not like it's still not getting enough gray, if you know what I mean. So, but the silver metallic is mainly on the body. Um, just a good habit I got into. You know, it's part of replicating what you see. So, kind of put a slight coating of gray 
on your fins. Not so much the bottom ones, but at least, at least your top ones. And now I'm going to go along the back, the top of the head, I guess is a better word for it. Now essentially this is the same color as, uh, well the same colors as like a stripe or a or white bass I guess. But on, on dead fish, I've seen kind of the, uh, you know, the little bit of the grayness involved. Uh, definitely in the fins. And this is going to fade right at the ladder line, or I'm even going to go below the ladder line. Because I'm going to put silver metallic on here, and I'm going to fade that down a lot farther. I'm going to be light with it. And bronze, just like on a stripe, or even a uh, white bass, I see the bronze color. I see it. It's like a yellow. But. Good thing about bronze, it's the closest thing you can get to yellow without turning green when you put it on top of blue or paints gray, if you can follow my drift. So that's why I like bronze. And it's a natural color, it's a good fin color, bronze is. So basically I'm going down to the ladder line. Main thing was the fins. I'm going uh, down to about right here with silver metallic. I see silver metallic, a lot dusting of it, so I like to incorporate it. But I put it on so light that it's not going to affect the whiteness of the fish, but you're still going to be able to see it. So, a lot coked. Okay, now I've got silver metallic. And basically, I want it to fade out of the belly, but I see so many pictures, my stripers, my stripe, my hybrids. You can all say, you know, when it turns in the light, you see the silver metallic. So I don't think it's wrong to put it on there. So I'm definitely going to incorporate it in. But I'm going to try to be uh, light with it. I don't want it to be too strong. But think of it is right now, if it is too strong, I can always... Make a correction and lighten it back up. I can put a little bit more white back on it and then put maybe some more silver pearl or white pearl. Uh, I guess what I'm getting at is before you put the stripes, make sure everything's like you want it. But if you make a mistake the first time and you think it's too dark or something, which is easy to do with a fish that's basically white, then don't let it bother you. It's probably not wrong to go ahead and put a little bit of this metallic color. It has a reflective base. Um, you see me paint my rockfish, you're, you're basically looking at the same color. Uh, but same color scheme. Um, I might say a rockfish. So, but it does seem like there's a. Maybe a little bit more gold, possibly, on these fish. You know, from a frontal angle, it looks pretty good. See, so I'm fading at the belly line. I may straighten it up. This is basically, I got it sideways, so you can see me carrying the color down on the back. But. I'll show you what we did. So that's got that good reflective base. And if I go ahead and just put some on the fins, I mean, have the fins good and reflective. But I hadn't even put my pearl on yet. That's my next color. So we're gonna get reflections from that, but also from this silver pearl. But let me straighten my fish up. I don't know if you're starting to see it yet, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, putting my pearl on. 
and you see how the reflective quality of it oh it's, it's nice it really is and with a silver pearl on top of it you're going to have a lot of a lot of shine i use this on my rockfish stripe so it's a nice color but you want to be a light with it i mean you want to see it because i see it in I see it kind of as a flip floppy type color, but it, it's got such a good reflective quality to it. And I like it. But I'll show you what we do next. That was silver metallic fading out just above the belly. You know about right in here, you want it faded out. And now I'm going to go back with uh, Silver Pearl. Okay, now I've got uh, Silver Pearl. I'm going to go over all my silver, and what it's going to do, it's going to make it really sheen. And it's, uh, it's going to really add a lot of shine to it. Everywhere you put the silver metallic, the top of the head, on the back, along the side. Oh wow, it's really livening it up. See, the silver is a little bit darker anyway. And anytime you put a, a pearl over a darker color, it really makes that pearl stand up. So, wow. But that's what we want, it's a good shiny fish. And this silver pearl is really doing the job. bottom fins probably be okay along the belly too but I may save the bottom for the white pearl but at least get your back whole side of your fish all the way down to where the silver pearl kind of fades out just above the belly right in there and I'll show you what we do next this is silver pearl Okay, here's what it looks like in the sunlight. You can get a glimpse of it. It uh, looks really neat. Um, I really like that shiny color. Now is as good a time as any to go ahead and clean the aisles before we start incorporating our, our darker colors in. Uh, you just get some lacquer thinner on a Q-tip and make sure it's not so wet that it's gonna drip down on your paint job because You'd be surprised how hard it is to fix something like just a, a, a you know lacquer thinner dripping down on a on a paint job. It's hard to kind of like match it up. Yeah, it's aggravating. So it's better to go ahead and just maybe you know uh, twist it one time on a paper towel to make sure it's not going to drip, and then go ahead and clean your eyes off with a Q-tip lacquer thinner. And now we've got paints gray. Good old paints gray, and I'm gonna I like the blue blood, the blue gray, gray blue look. Um, I like it when you look at it. This is going on the fence, top of the back, down to the ladder line, fade out right at the ladder line. Um, don't go from any more lower than the ladder line. Sometimes it seems like right in this area, it goes down slightly below the ladder line, maybe a quarter of an inch or so before it fades out. But as far as back here, it doesn't seem like it does. But, yeah, uh, it just, I just wanna put on where you question yourself. Is it uh, paints gray or gray? You want the, you want it to look blue or gray and you want to be able to look at it and kind of debate with yourself about it whether it's one or the other whether it's a blue or gray then you know you've kind of got it where you want it <clears throat>
Of course, it's going to be a little darker on the spiny and soft, of course. If you feel like it's too harsh, you can always go back down with it. I'm a little dark right here, but I know I'm going to put bronze over it a little bit later. You know, a little pepper and a bronze. So it doesn't hurt me that that's slightly dark. Show you what we do next. Make sure you get the back of the fins too in this color. Now we also want to get the back with this color. And now we're going to get the back. I guess probably a medium coat. Um, definitely got to try to adjust your spray The very top of the cheek is kind of like where you want the color to fade out from. And it takes time for this paint to grow on there. So you definitely want to just getting too big of a rush. And fade out at the ladder line. Darkest on top, fade out as you get down towards your ladder line. That's the way you gotta do it. Now 
mean, it has a neat effect with the with that pearly color coming through. It's a pretty neat effect to try to replicate. There the color is completely gone. Out. Five ladder on. Looks pretty good. Let me straighten it up and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to slightly tone down the uh, the paint gray a little bit with maybe go back over it with maybe just a little bit of the diver gray just to kind of tone it down a little bit it's not it's going to take very very little because diver gray is very opaque okay now we went back to Payne's gray I'm just going to kind of fade down on the fins and the back a little bit just a little bit just tone down the blue but not completely kill it out Gonna be a little tricky. I think I can do it. Kind of just off that gray a little bit, or kind of just off the paint gray a little bit. I mean, those fins seem to look pretty good. The bottom one. This one definitely needs to be off a little bit. I got a little bit too happy with it there. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go across the back just to hear it. Or actually, I think I'll opt for a little silver metallic, I think. Well, actually, I still got the paint's gray. Uh, there's places around the head that definitely look good with the paint gray. Plus you're going back with medium green, a lot dusty to medium green. So I think it's perfect. Just kind of take some of that bluish. You, know, you don't want to kill it out, you just want to Take some of the blue harshness, I guess.
Well, it looks kind of like an in-between gray and blue to me, so fade it out at the ladder line. Just go right here where you put the paint's gray. Just a slight dusting of it. Just enough to make you wonder if it's blue or gray. And it's kind of narrow, but yep, that's what you do. Our next color is going to be medium green, and we're going to get the top of the head. Okay, now we got medium green, and we're going to do the blending operation again, but this time with medium green. Now, in all these fish in this species, uh, when they they move around in the light, when you see them like on video, sometimes you catch a glimpse of green, of medium green. And sometimes you catch a glimpse of like maybe a gray. Sometimes you catch a glimpse of like Payne's gray. So we're just gonna try to incorporate them all to a certain degree to kind of compensate for this. So that's what I'm doing. Just blending the blending the blue, but not taking out all the uh, putting green in it, but not taking out all the the blue if that makes sense. That makes any sense. And basically what I'm doing is making my own unique color by letting the, the green rest on top of that blue and then fade out at the ladder line. Just like that. And that's pretty much it right there. And also, on the fins, let me straighten it up and I'll show you what I mean. And I'm also going to hit the, the base of the soft and spiny dorsal and the tail with this a little bit. bottom fins alone would be fine. And I'll show you what we do next. I'm going to go ahead and whiten the, <clears throat> the anal fin and the pelvic fins and probably just going to whiten them up. Actually right now I've got bronze. I'm going to go ahead and use a, put a light coat along the belly. over the silver metallic a little bit and uh, we go ahead and put some on the head too. This is like a super light coat you can't really hardly can't hardly even tell it's on there. If you can see it, you can definitely see it in the fish. See it on the cheeks. Uh, you can see it on the... Uh, See a little bit on the maxillary. Well, very little. Let's see it.
and at the base of the pins. You can kind of put it out into the fin a little bit if you know what I mean. Just along the braids. Has a real neat effect. Kind of coming out from the spiny dorsal. And the soft dorsal. And the tail. And now I'm going to go back to my wife. Okay, now I've got off white again, and I'm going to touch up some belly areas, uh, a little bit of overspray, and I'm also going to get around the cheek area, like up in here, and right here where we've got some coloration going on. Um, because when his mouth is shut, all this is pretty much white. So I, I try to keep it white if I can. I've only got a few colors left, and so I figured I'd go ahead and do that. And I can also go back over, over these areas with pearl. You know, if I take the pearl out, you know, I might want to put it back in, see? So, so I know I have that option, so. Yeah, just kind of want to straighten it up. Maybe tone down some of that bronze if it's a little bit... If I feel like it's on a little bit too thick. Right in here, got some overspray. On here, got some overspray. And... Uh, I may go ahead and lighten up some of these fins again. I'm a little bit too dark on them. They really almost don't have anything on them. got another detail, uh, thing going on so if the white gives a washcut look to some of these fins and stuff I've got another color going on that's gonna get rid of the washcut look around in here and everything so uh, I've got her under control but I'll show you what we do next if you feel like you want to get a little bit more pearl Go back over that line. Which is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to get my paints gray again and go down about an inch down the side of the back. Uh, from the top down about an inch or so and then fade out. I've got paints gray and I'm going to go just right along the back. Uh, real high. I'm not even go down to the ladder line.
put some bronze on, kind of lightened it up. So Find the info and then just fade it out. There we are. Right there. That's all we need right there. Show you what we do next. Okay, I think I've got everything just about how I like it as far as the bronze and everything. And my color is, you know, not too heavy. Um, a little bit of bluish gray, that's kind of what I'm after. Um, the back's got some blue going down. You can't hardly see it because of the glare. But yeah, I've got blue coming down from the back. The paint's gray. Well, we already had some on there. And, um, but I'll, we're going to go ahead and start putting the spots on. Well, I took some of the glare off the fish, but this is what we got. Um, we're going to start putting the spots on. Just going to recap what I've done so far. Uh, started out with silver metallic. Uh, well, we whited the fish, and we white, uh, white pearled the fish. And we put silver metallic around in here. I think I even put silver metallic before I pearled the fish. And then I put silver pearl over the silver metallic. Uh, Payne's gray on the fins first, then went over a little bit of diver gray, then I went over with medium green to try to achieve kind of a an olive type color, which I think I succeeded at doing. Um, then I, uh, of course, it made the fins about like how I like them, you know, the blending between blue or gray and kind of coming up with a little bit of both. Um, I put medium green on the head and stuff and blended it down into the stop at the lateral line. You can see the bronze. Bronze, I put, I put bronze even up here, up here a little bit because it, it's correct. The cheeks and the gill flat, you see it on the maxillary, the lower lip. I, I just went ahead and put some bronze over it and, and now we're going to go to black green. And I feel like I could have used Payne's Gray just to highlight these fins, which I may still do. And what it'll do, it'll bring the fin details out and you get your blue at the same time. And it looks really good. It's a neat effect. But right now we're going to go ahead and put the spots on. Now we're going to put the spots on. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but I can. If you're doing a reproduction, Um, you just have to incorporate them back in. And I've got black green. I'm using black green. This is what this is.
But this is what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep darkening my spots in, and I'll show you what it looks like. See, I've got the the black green, and pretty you might want to see the lateral line work. I think I want to keep that kind of narrow. And make a line all the way through it. Just right there on top of the very top of the ladder line. And go all the way to the tail. And then you start you know, putting your spots in, you know. small fish like that they're not big but in fact they're not more than spots really but it'd be wrong not to incorporate it in you know Basically, the place where I'm putting the spot is it's kind of strategic a little bit. It's, it's, it's right along the ladder line where the scale above comes out and where the scale below comes out. There's like a little, the, the tightest spot kind of hard to explain but you can see it um, you get the, the scale on the lateral line you know you can see that scale goes around and then you see two scales come out from the middle of it to start the row above and the row below right there is where I'm putting my, my shooting my spray I'm taking it all the way to the lateral line Then I'm going to go to the next row. And I can see where I've got some work up there. Okay, I'm going along the ladder line and it's not wrong to you're going along the ladder line, then jump up a scale row. You know, at least on these guys, you know, it's it's not wrong to do it. <clears throat> or even go back down. But just takes patience and make sure you stay true to where you want to put your spot. It makes for a good looking fish. Usually the first one above the ladder one is not too broke up, maybe a little bit towards the head it is.
see how it kind of jumped up? That is actually correct. I well, can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. They don't always break up too bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish out my stripe pattern and I'll show you what I got. Well, as you can tell, there's like a faint line going through at least the main stripes. So I like to incorporate that in. Just my spray. And I'll go ahead and put a faint line. And I mean narrow. Probably more so on the top ones. Yeah, about like that. You just want to see a little connectivity. And, uh, yeah, if the lines come out a little bit loud, you know, you can always darken your spots in a little bit but this is kind of what we got right here and <clears throat> now we're also going to put some vague spotting and stuff in between these spots you know for realism so we're going to do that a little bit as well but you got to be like super faint with it if you're not real faint with it, it's not going to look right. Especially on these littler fish. They, uh... So I got my spray and I'm just... Like super faint with it. And the line's even going to fade out sometimes. And then maybe pick back up. You know, a few more spots. We don't want to get too carried away with it. Kind of like that. I mean, you get the idea.
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get that done and show you what we got. Now we're gonna use the black green and darken the back and the fins and everything else. I'm gonna highlight the fins and touch them up and all that stuff. Uh, black green again. And I'm just gonna use this to kind of darken the fins a little. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up his mouth and stuff while I'm at it. I'm gonna touch up the top of the mouth and everything. And I don't want to kill out all the bronze, of course. Let the paint come down. Let the oil spray from the front frontal front lip uh, hit the front of your maxillary and let them come to a point right there, your spray. And that's where the fish straight before you do this, but and then not killing out all of the uh, bronze I put on there. even go around very light, I mean lightly, you don't want to kill out everything, but about like that. It doesn't hurt to come in from this angle either. A little place there, yeah, that's, that's good, just like that. Okay, I'm going to continue with uh, darkening the back of the fish. And basically, we'll go right down the top of the back. I mean, right down the very top. And I think I'm going to bring out some, call out some of the scales on this. Not much, just maybe a couple of passes. Right there, that's all I'm going to do, right there. And bring out the scales. And that's it. 
No more highlighting or nothing out there. Um, you know, except for the except for the pins, of course. Screw from one angle. Bring out the rays from underneath to the bottom. Kill out all your preceding colors. Uh, go ahead and hot the other fans now, but uh, gonna readjust the fish. I just hot the other fans and use a piece of card to take over spray from the rest of the fish. And Good enough for me, just highlight the pins, bring up the rays. And we have to do we do the other pins the same way. Have to might, might have to readjust, but that's how you do it. Now we're gonna do the other pins the same way. Just bring out the rays. Fill out that mat. Maybe do these a little bit better. This one a little better. Darken the very leaning corners of the fish and adjust my spray accordingly. Now, go in right between them like that. a little more just you know to so then stick it like a sore thumb and do the same thing to the soft bit same thing that you do to the spiny whistle kind of kind of creep in from the outside you gotta blend it in blend it in like that now we're gonna do the tail And now comes the tail. <clears throat> there again, adjust your spray accordingly and kind of, you know, you know it, it even looks better if you get real close to the edge. Especially on like the tail. But kind of blend it in where, where it looks natural at any rate. Right. Go to the top of it. And even the bottom of it. Kind of blend it in a little. But 
very well. Now we're going to do the bottom fins as well, the pelvic and pectoral. Okay, I'm just going to do the, uh, I'm going to do the bottom ones in white. I'm going to trim them with white. And this one I'm going to go ahead and do, make sure you get some airbrush. Air spray coming out. And I'm just going to, right there on the edge, about a third of it, about like that. Feel free to blend it in if you got it. And then I'll uh, show you what I'm going to do next. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and darken the back just a little bit more. The back seems like it's a little bit light still yet. Yeah, before I go ahead and darken the back, just a couple of sweeps. Uh, just right on the very, very top of it. Not so much even the top of the head, really, just the very top. It's not going to hurt to have a dark part on this fish. That's it, right there. It's almost too much already. And I'll show you what we do next. Now I think I've got the back about as dark as I want it. So, got the fins about like how I want it. I think I've got everything just about like how I want it. And, but I'll show you what we do next. Okay, I've got, now I've got white again. And I'm wanting to just highlight the very end, you know, just the very end of the anal. And the pelvic skin. There you are. Maybe come down the front a little bit like that. Do the same on me. Maybe lighten up the leading edge right there. Could be both fins this way. Apologize for having to see the back of my neck. But let's see what we got here. Just drop it on the end. Well, that's what we got. And I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now we've got gold sparkle again. I mean, uh, gold would be good, but I've got the bronze again. And what I'm going to do is put it back in the in the fin rays. And, you know, it's such a good color to kind of bring in. You know, because it doesn't really turn green like a yellow. But yet you see this color in the fins. So it's going to kind of just like highlight the spiny rays more than anything. Go towards the base. And even on the tail. Especially where it 
comes out from the from the body. It's definitely a good spot for it. Yeah, right in here. You just kind of follow the uh, the signs. Of it. You can't go wrong. Just air pressure, whatever you got to do to get that paint to, to flow. You know, we're going to call that quits like that. And even a little on the down here, you know, where it comes out of the body. Right here. Um, comes out of the body. That bronze is a real good color for these spines, you know, on the pin. So I like to use it. We just add a little bit of color. Don't get carried away with it, but not even. It is one heck of a good paint color. And uh, this one already put it on the, on the cheek, as you're well aware. Now I'm going to lightly go over the, the body again with it. right here just slightly above the lateral line just to give a hint of it and you can see it right there in the middle just slightly but I'll show you what we do next now I've got iridescent blue or shimmering blue and I'm going to use this to do some touching up and I'm going to go over all my spots with it. Just like we did on the striper, uh, doing it again on this. Get individual spots if you see them. And of course, the lateral line. You gotta get a better, better bag. Go over it again. And do all your spots that way. Turn down my air pressure just a little bit.
but I also want to use it on the fins as well. I've got my iridescent blue. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a hint of it on here. It'll definitely show up when uh, when I gloss the fish. Definitely. And we're going to go ahead and put some on the cheek and the gill plate. Okay, I've got my iridescent blue again. And I'm going to put some on the lower cheek. The iridescent blue and the gill plate because it shows. I've seen it on dead fish, even. So, well, that's it. And now we're going to paint the gills and touch up the fins, maybe with just a hint of red. Yep, the iridescent blue and all that. You can't see it too good right now, but I guarantee you when you put the gloss on, you'll see it. Uh, the lower cheek and the gill flap. <clears throat> now we've got gill red. And I'm going to put it here where I see bronze on the fins. But I mean, it's got to be... I mean, I'm just gonna put a faint amount, even something like gold toner or something, I don't know. Might be good enough, but. So I'm just gonna change the value. And that, oh wow, almost too dark. And if you look on fish, you'll see that. Right here around the, around the base, you'll see, you'll see that. And, even on the, yep. And that color can even, sometimes comes out a little bit. I mean, it doesn't just stay right in, you know. And I'm even gonna put a touch on the, I don't wanna kill anything out, I just wanna add some of a, a fleshy look a little. You need place to see bronze on the fin. And even on the pectoral. I'm not sure if you can see that, but oh yeah, you can see it. Right here on the pectoral. The little bronze on there. Oh wow, that's almost a little bit too red. But let me put that yellow gloss on there and be just fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and paint the gills. So we can paint the gills. I went in and took the fish off. Now we're going to use gill red to paint the gills. But the first thing we do, well, this thing's got a small mouth. Um, but you put a paint towel in his mouth so the paint don't mess up the inside of his mouth. Got the gill red. Adjust my spray. And now I get his gills. If you can see it with your eye, you should be able to paint it. And a lot of times when I paint my fish white, or if I pearl my fish, I do the same thing. You can turn it upside down. Just 
try to be neat with it and keep it around the heels. Hold it however you got to, got to, to get what you got to get. Now this last heel right here, I want to be neat with it. So a lot of times I'll just you know make it smooth looking up against the body. I mean you want you want it to look neat and presentable. And I see white on the other heel, so I'll go ahead and get my airbrush on it. Start here in the end on this junction area. Make sure you take your time and do a good job. If you see it with your eye, you should be able to put your airbrush right on. Uh, this is mounted with one gill closed. I didn't mount it, but uh, there you go. And some people get a little happy with it and put it in fleshy areas around the mouth. Maybe the lower jaw or something. I've seen them do the rockfish that way. But now we're going to gloss the fish. So we're going to clean the eye off and then gloss the fish. And I'm going to put it back on the stand. Okay, I've got my black retainer, and of course this comes out. I'll set it for Uh Then we're going to turn it off. You want to maybe turn it one time inside a paper towel or something so you don't mess it up. both eyes that way and uh, then we're going to wash the fish. Now we're going to wash the fish. Uh, just got some Min Wax polyurethane gloss, uh, clear gloss. And we're just going to go over the fish and See how he completely changes color when we put some gloss on this guy. 
I know the rockfish did. We did a rockfish earlier, and it done the same thing. It turned into a completely different looking beast after we've lost it. It's some good stuff, though. It really is. Kind of oh, simple enough to figure out. You just put the gloss on there. And I like to hold the fish any way I can to get that gloss on there. But I'm going to go ahead and finish glossing this thing and I'm going to show you what we got. Well, this is how I paint a hybrid striper. <laughs>